All right. Well, hi, team. It is our Coaches Out for Change weekly team time, Monday night, January 16th, and uh, really glad to be here with you. Um, my name is Dee Corchin, if we haven't met yet. Um, we actually have nine new coaches on our team already for the month in our organization for the month of January. So if this is one of your first calls or uh, maybe your first call, or maybe you were on because you're checking us out, you are welcome. Um, along with every coach, every experience level, we love to come here on Mondays to connect one as a community, um, but two to learn and grow together. So um, inspiration as people are signing on right now, it's a great two and a half minute video um, by Dr. Martin Luther King. And I'm gonna put that on right now. is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go and the question is whether you have a proper a solid and a sound blueprint and i want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have, as a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. And finally, in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal star, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving. Pretty powerful, huh? You know, I saw something on Facebook today that I thought was great. And it said, let's not just make this a day that we quote quotes from Martin Luther King, King but let's really make this a life that, you know, a, a, um, I can't think of the right word, a, a value system that we live out. And I have to say, I really believe in Optavia, we do. I really, truly believe we do. Um, I have a question for you. Um, put a two in the chat if you were on the launch into health Um <clears throat> webinar series that we had on Saturday and possibly paste, post a takeaway. Like what was something that resonated from you with you for that? Um, what was something that kind of stuck? You know, um, something that I really, really stuck with me was um, just the reminder was through Dr. A and Dan Bell, but just the reminder of the tremendous need for what it is that we have in our hands, the tremendous need from our health program, um, and to the business opportunity. And Dan Bell gave some incredible statistics and uh, just talked about 64% of the population living paycheck to paycheck. 40% uh, of those who earn over 100,000 um, still live paycheck to paycheck. So few have uh, one third, have no savings at all. And 60% don't even have $1,000 for emergency um, if anything went wrong. So, you know, it is absolutely incredible. And Dr. A had said, you know what? Refuse to be a pessimist. 
like in today's world, refuse to be a pessimist. And I think that is such great advice. And I just want to compliment you guys on what you've been doing with sharing about Optavia, sharing. Um, we have brought in already this month with our Commit to Health promotion, 137 um, new clients. Um, and I would say we will probably tr at least triple that by the end of the month. Um, not double it because we're halfway, but triple. And then all of our clients that we can um, reactivate. So thank you for everything you're doing with that. There is a boot camp starting on January 28th. And I don't want you to miss this. Um, on January 28th, this is going to be an eight week boot camp. Um, and it's um, at 11 a.m. It will be recorded if you can't be on every Saturday, but there'll be three different tracks for this based on where you are in the business um, to help you grow. And I will tell you from 12 years of doing this business that everything I learned was by attending events and by attending trainings and then putting into action what I learned. And so I encourage you to be on it. There is a requirement that you have had to have uh, purchased the recording or purchased and been a participant in the launch into health if you're a senior coach or above or purchase the recordings and you can still do that. If you are new to Optavia or not yet a senior coach, you get to attend for free. So, uh, but you do need to register. You need to register. So I'll pop that in the chat as um, Frank is getting, is going to be going on. Um, and then if we have time at the end, I'm really excited to show you something cool that we are doing in the Eat, Live, and Be Healthy group. So make sure that um, you stay on till the end. So Tonight, we're going to talk about, we have this huge opportunity in our hands. We have 66 of us on this call because I know um, that you have a desire to improve your life and improve the lives of others. And so we're going to talk tonight about um, what you have in your hands and whether is it a, the great thing about this is it can be anything you want it to be. But we do want to make sure our actions and our mindset align with what our goals are. And sometimes there is a gap. Um, and so this can be a hobby or it can be a business part-time, full-time, spare time, um, but we want to make sure those two things align. So no better than uh, Frank Davis to share with us. So Frank, I'm going to give it to you. All right. Thank you, Dee. And uh, again, my name is Frank Davis. I am an independent certified up to be a coach. And uh, I'm not going to share my story tonight, um, but I do want to welcome everybody here. If you're a brand new coach, or even if you're a coach or a client checking us out, welcome. You are welcome here. Uh, I will be sharing my story tomorrow night. So I'm uh, hosting Tuesday night client community call. So if you want to know my story, tune into client community call tomorrow night. But basically, I've been coaching about four years with my beautiful, wonderful wife, Shauna, who stepped into coaching first. So uh, I want to first of all welcome you. Happy New Year. It's my first time speaking uh, this year. And happy Martin Luther King Day. And I'm going to be talking about a hobby versus a business. And I got to be honest with you, uh, for the last couple hours today, I've been struggling about, uh, you know, what do I say and how do I say it? And, and I hope I don't offend anybody because, you know, even the title can sound offensive, uh, hobby versus business. So, uh, you know, one of the first things I want you to know is, is that I hope you are somewhat educated. I hope you're somewhat inspired. And I also hope you know that, uh, wow, if that guy Frank can coach uh, and doing and saying the things he does, I know I'm gonna rock this thing. So I hope I give you hope. Um, but I got a cat behind me, meowing away. I hope you can't hear that, uh, kind of a distraction. Um, so anyways, I'm going to get started. I had 12 slides I was going to share, and I thought nobody wants to see these slides, so I cut it way back, and I'm going to kind of do the speaking myself, but I do want to share a little bit, so I'm going to start um, screen share. Can you all see that? All right, great. Thank you so much. So uh, let's see. From the beginning, so I'm going to be talking about hobby versus business. And um, one of the first things I want to tell you is that it's not the particular product or services that really determine the hobby or the business, okay? doesn't matter what it is. It's not the product or service. You can have a hobby where you, let's say, sell makeup or jewelry or, or whatever, or that could be a business as well, right? You could have a hobby where you um, ride bicycles or you ride a bike. 
that can also be a business. It doesn't really matter what the product or service is. It's really about the mindset and about the uh, work ethic. So why do people pursue a hobby? People typically pursue a hobby because they wanna move from pain to pleasure. We got some sort of pain in our life and hobby can distract us or business can help alleviate some type of pain we got going in our life. Why else do people pursue a hobby or business? You wanna fill your time. Certainly a business will fill your time if you have a job or a business and a hobby fills that time as well. The third reason people pursue a hobby or a business is it provides for community. A lot of hobbies, you, you're part of a community. And then the fourth reason is a business would provide an income stream. So as we're moving forward discussing a hobby and business, another disclaimer I wanna make is, I'm not here to judge whether you wanna pursue a hobby or a business. Both are okay. Some people come into Optavia and they want it to be just a little hobby or a big hobby, that's okay. Some people want a business, whether it's a little business or a big business, and that's okay. But the primary difference between a hobby and a business is really what's up here, the way you think about them. It's also known as job mentality. Everybody, has anybody here not had a job? If you've not had a job, raise your hand. Or some type of business. Okay. So you'll get this, what I'm talking about. With a job, you're always told what time to show up, what time you can end your day or what time you can go home. A lot of times, what time you go to lunch, how long or when you can take a vacation and so much more, what your duties are, where you need it, where your office is or, or what, you know, all that is told to you on a job. However, this business, you're not told that. This is an all volunteer army. You're totally in business for yourself, but not by yourself because you have the support of a mentorship, but you're not told when to show up. Hopefully nobody told you tonight, you must be here. You're here of your own accord. You may have gotten an email, you may have gotten a text message, you may have seen a, a message thread, maybe encouraging you to be here, but you don't have to be here. And if you don't wanna stay, you don't need to stay. You're in business for yourself. So that's a huge difference between a job mentality and this particular business. Now, what are some other differences between a hobby and a business? Hobbies are fun. Businesses are typically work. Hobbies create short-term pain, whereas a business you typically have ongoing pain, right? What's an example? Let's go back to the bicycle. I was going to let's start doing some bike, mountain biking or bicycling, there would probably be some short-term pain. My legs would hurt, my feet would hurt, but that would get better over time. However, a business or a job, it tends to be painful ongoing. Going to work, working holidays, working nights, weekends. A hobby reduces stress. A business would typically increase your stress. A hobby typically focus on, is on yourself. Again, if I was going to be a marathon runner by myself, if it were a business, now that same marathon runner tends to impact other people. You have a team, you have some people supporting you. A hobby, typically you're spending money, right? I mean, for me, I have a hobby that's watercolor painting. Some of you may have seen that. I spend money on paintbrushes and paint and canvas. A business is typically income producing. So, as we move forward, what is the key difference why people choose hobbies versus a business? And I'm gonna share my screen again. And let's see here, uh, from the beginning. Okay, the key difference is a hobby is that activity of convenience. A business is an activity of commitment. If you're going to have a hobby, typically it's convenient. I'll fit it in when I can work it in. However, a business, you should be intentional or one should practice intentionality 
be intentional. If I'm going to a job or I have a business, I know I got to show up at a certain time. Now, if you want to turn your coaching business from a hobby to a business, what are some things that you might want to do? Or how do you identify a coach on your team and say, hmm, I wonder if that coach is maybe treating this coaching business as a hobby or as a business. And here are some key factors. Hobby thinking, when it relates to this coaching business, when you're planning, a coach that has a hobby has no monthly map. They have no plan. In the area of marketing, they rarely post. They don't reach out from a list of names. Hobby thinking, they're probably not here on coach team time, right? Those who are treated as hobby, this is not a priority or they don't engage in training. They don't engage on the coach's page. They don't engage on the eat live. It's a hobby. Why should they? They don't make it a priority. I would imagine people that are thinking that this business is a hobby probably did not attend the training this past weekend. Probably didn't. Their strategy they rarely or never have a mentor Zoom call. And then their action is pretty inconsistent. Now, what does a business coach do or business coaching? They submit a monthly map, usually within the first few days of the month. They post daily. They are expanding their reach. So they're increasing their connections or their friends. They're engaged in team time. Like I'm speaking to the choir right now. You guys here, you're here. Business thinking, they attend training, even when they don't want to. They set the example. Their strategy is they have monthly Zoom calls mentorship, and they take daily action, which results in results. Now, how do you move from hobby to business. And why would you want to move from hobby to business? You move from hobby to business because number one, it impacts others. And number two, it impacts your income. So if you're ready, if you're ready to make a shift from hobby to business, and it's okay if you're not, it's okay if you want to treat this as a hobby. That's okay. But if you're ready, what do you need to do? What are some steps to move it from hobby to business? And here's what I'd recommend. Establish a 90-day agreement with yourself. Establish a 90-day agreement with yourself. That's not a goal. We know historically, Dan Bell teaches, it takes 90 days to see results. If you've been in pause, or you've kind of been like in uh, holiday mode through October, November, December, and you're kind of getting cranked back up now in January, guess what? You're probably not going to see any results until March or April. I mean, I just got to tell you the bad news. Now, you may get a client or two, you may, but you're not going to see any real results until March or April. So establish a 90-day agreement with yourself, and that is a contract with yourself. And like all contracts, that contract should be in writing. It's a binding agreement with yourself. And hopefully with yourself, you will honor that commitment and you won't break any promises. You put it in writing, you sign it and date it. That's called a 90-day agreement. And here's an op something optional. Share it with your coach and ask your coach to hold you accountable. What goes on the agreement? Your purpose, which is your why. The process, what you're going to do, your plan of action for the next 90 days. But more importantly, it's just a 90-day agreement for purpose and action without any expectations. You're gonna have this agreement. You're gonna say, I'm gonna do these things for the next 90 days and I'm not gonna measure any results, but I am gonna celebrate the wins along the way. So if you want to move it from hobby to business, that would be the first step. But what happens when it gets hard? It's gonna get hard in the next 90 days. What do you do when it gets hard? Remind yourself, to show up. If you show up, you're automatically telling yourself, this is a business. Remind yourself of your why. Remind yourself that the grass is not greener on the other side. See, when things get hard, 
we tend to tell ourselves, oh, I'm going to quit doing this and I'm going to go do that. I'm going to take a pause on this and I'm going to try that over there. Guess what? That over there is going to be just as hard. That item over there or that service over there or that product over there, it's going to be just as hard. It's just going to be a different set of circumstances. It's going to be just as hard. Remind yourself that you're going to have hard at every season. A lot of people think, oh, if I'll just get those first five clients and then it won't be hard. If I'll just get to executive director, then it won't be hard. If I just get to global, it won't be hard then. If I just get to IPD, whew, I'll have it made. It won't be hard. Can I tell you, it will be hard in every single season of your business. It's hard for us. D, is it hard for you? It's still hard. Hard is normal. Learn to work through the hard, push through the hard. And when it gets hard, invest in yourself and have an honest conversation with your mentor. Say, what do you see that I don't see? What am I doing wrong that I should be doing right? And when it gets hard, don't pause, don't check out, and don't quit. Growing may feel like breaking at first. So those are the things to do if you want to move from hobby to business. And for some practical steps, I want you to hear from a couple people. The first co coach I want you to hear from is a fairly brand new coach, brand new. What does this coach do to move it from hobby or business? Or do they treat it like a hobby or they treat it like a business? I want you to hear from them. And that's Barbara Bish. Come off mute, Barbara, and share for a minute or two or three or four. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Frank. Um, can everyone hear me OK? Good. Well, uh, Frank asked me to come on and talk a little bit about my background. Um, so I'm a married woman and a pug lover and a pharmacist by training. And I work in the pharma industry and uh, medical affairs internal training. And I met Frank through a connection on LinkedIn. And I saw him post those pictures of transformation and over time. And I just, I just went ahead and said, you know, I'm in a low point and I'm just going to fill out his jot form. So I did that. And next thing you know, I met with um, Shauna, who's now my coach. So from there, that was last summer, I stepped into um, coaching in about three months after um, being a client after I lost about 30 pounds. And my why is because I'm a healthcare professional and I want to help others um, to be successful on their journey um, to a healthy BMI. So <clears throat> Being a new coach, I want to absorb as much as I can so that I can best serve other people. And so I understand it's a business. And so knowing that I, um, you know, put, I'm putting in time in my schedule every week to do certain things. And I think that um, Frank basically hit it on the nose when it, when he was talking about some of the things that, you know, I am doing. I'm, I'm going to um, all the trainings. I went to the Saturday training and the one back in December. And I'm obviously on these calls as well as scheduling my mentor call with Shauna every week. And um, I have one client right now who's my sister-in-law. And so we've been working on the habits of health and going through like element three and four. So it's helping me to learn as I go through it with her. Um, I'm also just absorbing other business related skills. Like I'm interested in, you know, updating my Facebook and LinkedIn profile pictures to look more professional. Um, I'm easing into posting three times a day right now. I'm probably getting one to two a day, but I'm getting there, um, a little bit of a longer of a, uh, <clears throat> like a hill to climb there, but I'm also learning about video skills and marketing as well. And so I think the biggest thing is that I am looking at this as a business. Um, I know the business outcome is helping others get to a healthy BMI. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. And that's where it's coming from in my heart. And that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Barbara. That was wonderful. And I hope you heard that, uh, she said that she is putting in the time. She's being very intentional about 
treating it like a business. Showing up here, attending all the training, and um, that will make all the difference in the world. All right, we had another coach that was going to speak. She just texted me. They've lost their internet. Um, and that's Kelly. Uh, are you back on yet, Kelly? No. Okay. Well, she pops on. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance for her to speak. But um, I'm just going to let you know that, you know, as we move forward in, in 2023, you're going to experience uh, people in your business, coaches, that want to treat it like a hobby or that want to treat it like a business. And the purpose of the call is to identify which coach is, wants to treat it like a hobby and which coach wants to treat it like a business because that's an act, different action steps from a met, for a mentor coach. And it's okay if coaches want to have a hobby and it's okay if they want to have a business. But those are different action steps and you know, you know, and you may want to entertain how you treat those coaches and, and what you do with those coaches. So as we wrap up here, I'm going to turn it back over to Dee because I don't see Kelly on here anywhere. So we'll just have her speak at another time. Uh, I'm Dee, on here. Oh, I got back here. on. Sorry. Okay. All right. Come off mute and share. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just, I love technology except when it doesn't work. <laughs> so um, I, I, the reason I stepped into coaching was because, well, most of you know, my background is as a dietitian, a clinical dietitian. And um, I was counseling people who had health problems and, um, and giving them things to do with their intake and all of that in order to lose weight. Um, and they were people that had kidney disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and all those things. So, um, but, you know, for me, I ended up losing 50 pounds in five months after three months and losing 30 pounds. I was like, this is very efficient. I want to share this with everybody. This is working better than anything I could have, re re you know, recommended for anybody before. And that's when I wanted to jump in to coaching. Um, and I saw that it was a, a, a good way to help people, help people prevent what those conditions were. I was handling them on the backside. I wanted to help people prevent those types of things to not end up with diabetes, to not end up with kidney disease, et cetera, heart disease, those kinds of things. So that was the reason I started. Um, whenever I was doing, um, whenever I'm counseling clients and, and they're you know, telling me about these really cool things that are occurring at the, the non-scale victories as well as the scale victories, that just makes my heart happy. So that's why I keep doing it because it's just, it, it fulfills me in knowing that I'm helping them. They're, it's not just that individual, it's their spouse and their kids and their coworkers and the people that the other family members. So they end up changing their family legacy of health. Um, and it, it changes that course for always. Um, and so that's a, that's huge. And there's just so much more to health than weight loss. Yes, there's way advantages for weight loss, but there's so much more to it. As we all know, as coaches, there's so much more to it. So as far as business or hobby, I started it as a business. I was working a full-time position. I started it. Oh, this is going to be a side business, right? And I want it to grow but I was treating it more like a hobby, like some of the things that Frank was mentioning. I thought I was having a business. I thought I had a business, but I didn't, I had a hobby. And then I got more serious and was paying more attention to what I was doing and following through and the course changed. And then of course, that's when things started to grow. That's when my team started to grow. That's when I was doing more with the business and following through all those steps. So. Whatever Frank and Shauna told me to do, because they're they're my coaches, that's what I did. Um, and that's benefited me greatly. Um, so not just in the business side, but just growing as a person. Um, there's so many things that I have learned that I don't think I would have learned otherwise. And there's just relationships are improved and those kinds of things, because you there's so much that you learn when you have the training. 
Um, but I have learned that with in treating it like a business, I have to have that balance. Um, I've cut back on my the work that I do for somebody else. I still do some of that, but this is my main gig. This is the way I look at it. This is my business. That stuff I do out there, I help them out some. That's my side gig. That's not my forever thing. This business is what I'm doing, and this is where I want to be. And so I'm working to keep this business consistent so that I can let that go. No problem. Right now, I'm you know still with them because I enjoy working with them. And it is another way to reach people in the healthcare field that need to be on this program, right? If they don't know me, then they don't know they need this program. They don't know that they can do this program. So that's just another way that I, I'm at another avenue of helping people. So that's another reason that I've continued to part-time work uh, as an employee because I can reach more people that way. Um, and so that's one of the ways I look at it. But what I've done is, is I block my time. I make sure that I have blocks of time scheduled for my business. And um, I'm consistent with things that I do every day with, with posting, with paying attention to what's going, you know, going in, going out and all of those things. And I'm not a bookkeeper. I don't like doing the bookkeeping part, but I have found easy ways and fun ways to do it. Because for me, it has to be fun or I'm not going to do it. That's just the way I am. That's my personality. So um, blocking time is a is a, another thing. But the number one thing is that I'm uh, my that decision making that decision of this is now my business. This is not a side business. This is the main business. You know, we talk about keeping the main thing the main thing whenever we're you know dealing you know, whenever we're um going to family gatherings and things of that sort you want to deal with you want you want to not deal with but you're enjoying the people instead of the food well for me keeping the main thing the main thing is this is my main thing thank and you that other that, thing Kelly. Is that is so good thank, Kelly, you. thank you so much sorry yeah. i'm talking too much no it was great though <laughs> and i think your main point was really you're consistent and also i love that it's a mindset it is so much a mindset and as frank said wherever you are is great i will tell you from years of doing this and um coaching a lot of coaches etc um i think the two things that can get in our biggest way our way is i feel that um or I see evidence where sometimes we want it to be a business. We want the results of a business. We want the income of a business, but we give it hobby level in, uh, act, you know, action and activity. And so there's always when there's a gap there. And the other thing I see, um, and I don't want this to be you or anyone on this call, is I see when, it, when it, we do hit the hard that we often retract, right? And we retract and we make excuses and suddenly other things become very important, et cetera, because we don't wanna work through the hard, but it's through that personal growth and through the hard that we actually get to the really, really good and what's what's out there. So thank you, Frank, for, for bringing this to light. Barbara mentioned about Facebook. And if you are a new coach um, or looking to enhance your face, your social media skills, or you're working with coaches to enhance, there is a special workshop this coming Saturday Saturday, the 21st, um, and I'll post about it, but it is pre boot camp about launching on social media. So I will put that in the group. Um, to, it'll be tonight or tomorrow when that is in there. And uh, do encourage you to, to join in with that boot camp. We are in a the great thing about Optavia is that regardless of where you are, where you've been, it's always a time that we can start and grow again. And as Frank said, there's always a, a, a time that it takes to rebuild. And so going back into a place of learning, going back to being a beginner um, and taking it next level, like so much is possible as we're beginning this new year. So I'm excited for you guys. Um, I will. Um, do you want to stay on for one minute? Do you want me to show you what we're doing in our Eat, Live and Be Healthy group? You want to give me a thumbs up if you want to, if you want to stay on, stay on with me. If you want to hop off, that's great. But let me, uh, let me just show you with something we've been wanting to do for um, a bit. Just a lot of times there are repetitive questions asked in, um, whoops, let me see if I can get rid of this. Uh, bear with me. Um, repetitive questions answered. Well, shoot. Hang on. Okay, hang on. I'm coming back. 
So what we want to do is put more resources within Eat, Live, and Be Optavia. So we are in the, pro they're in development right now. But um, when you go, this is easiest to see from your desktop, but there's a new section here called guides. So right here at the top across, we've always got the, the things. If you click on guides, what we're going to have in here is our most frequently asked questions, tips for getting started, what is fat burn, what do you say? So instead of you guys having to search for these to tag your clients, or if they're asking questions, you can send them to the guides. Um, there are also other ones on food related things. We have common questions about what can I get at Trader Joe's? What cauliflower crust can I use? How much PB2 can I have? So um, this will all be in here. We're gonna have habits of health and transformational stuff. We're gonna have um, hacks and recipes and we're open to their stuff on coaching. Um, but what do you think about that? Is that great that we're making that more user-friendly, um, more concise, more um, way to do it? So good, good, good. So it is in development, so work with us, but we appreciate your feedback. And, um, and yeah, just always looking to make it better for you guys and our clients. So thanks so much. We will see you next time. Next week, Lisa Bloom is going to share with us about different communication styles, how to interact with somebody who maybe isn't wired quite like you are. Um, right, Lisa? <laughs> so she's going to work our magic with us to show us. Um, Lisa's, got, Lisa's got great leadership and communication training. So be back next week with us. And thanks again to Frank, Barbara, and to Kelly for sharing with us. And we'll see you next time.